Why would you be irritated that someone who has many of your values doesn't want to label their values a particular way? Why do you care whether they attach a certain label to themselves? This would be like me being irritated that someone who believes similarly to myself, I believe in capitalism and socialism, didn't want to label themselves as wanting capitalism and socialism. What do I care how they label it? As long as they're pushing out a message that I support, I think that's awesome. And if because they didn't use certain labels, they get more people to understand what's being said because the people they're talking to don't have expectations on what they're saying because of a label that's been demonized, then that's even more awesome. Let's face it. People hear some words and immediately stop listening. It is, in many cases, all about semantics. And when talking about feminist buzzwords, to the disgruntlement of some of the anti-feminists, it is mostly about their feelings being hurt because it wasn't politically correct according to their politics. Here are some words that make people ignore everything you say and will make people angrily attack you. Privilege. Feminism. Racism. Sexism. Transphobia. Gender equality. And in some cases, for people who are really ridiculous, just the word women, because, you know, to do more virtue signaling, that's separating people via their sex, and I'm against that kind of thing. Yeah, when it's convenient to be against it, otherwise other forms of this are perfectly fine with you because biology, I guess, determines everything. But all in all, people have stopped caring about other viewpoints when they hear a buzzword. And many others have stopped caring if people call them some of the right-wing buzzwords like regressives, SJWs, communists, socialists, hippies, useless, crazy, freeloaders, a drain to the system, cancer, and so on. You see, people being offended at political incorrectness goes both ways. We seem to have forgotten that. If, in the middle of a rant about the effects of religion in the government, I said something like, The Lord is my toilet. I shall not flush. It would surely be considered uncalled for, unnecessary, uncool, unbelievable, and totally inconsiderate. I can picture a religious person I know stating that I'm being just as bad as, well, insert the most horrible person here. It could even be Hitler, right? If I made a video of me pounding a nail into the dick of a statue of Jesus, I'm sure it would offend a lot of religious people. And they would state that it didn't really offend them, but would go on for at least a couple paragraphs about how inconsiderate and childish it is because, after all, it didn't give them any emotions at all. And that's why they're ranting about it, because it it wasn't offensive at all and didn't trigger any emotions in them at all. You know, that kind of strange logic, right? Don't say anything bad about Ronald Reagan. Oh, no. And now let's address things that have to do with right-wingers who aren't necessarily religious, right? Don't say anything bad about Abraham Lincoln. Don't say anything bad about George Washington. Don't say anything bad about Christopher Columbus because, you know, they were a product of their time in conjunction with their beliefs and anything bad they did should be ignored because of it. But let's demonize most Muslims because they're somehow not a product of their time in conjunction with their beliefs. And even if they were, we should somehow still treat them like they're terrible people. Ooh, I just offended more people because I'm comparing dead people who did things and stuff in accordance to the beliefs they had and the time that they lived with other people who do things and stuff in accordance to the beliefs they have and the time they're living in. To Republicans and a lot of people on this platform, those sorts of things are offensive to say because that's the right-wing version of examples of political incorrectness because it hurts their feelings. Pay attention to their feelings and ignore the feelings of anyone on the left because the left doesn't matter as much as the right. So let's scream and cry that the sky is falling unless everyone agrees that the left is cancer. There are so many things that we haven't really been able to say because the right wing would throw a tissy fit over it. And we continue to put up with that and unfortunately usually stop talking about some subjects as a result of that. I mean, how dare you say something bad about the founding fathers? They founded this country, and you need to pay tribute to them, or you're un-American and hate freedom and liberty, and and you hate everything that makes this country, supposedly, great. Yes, let's, let's bow to the dead slave owners and people who thought women shouldn't have rights because America, 
Maybe you should get so mad at me for saying that that you'll say it's hate speech or treason or shouldn't be allowed or something that only a dirty, smelly hippie would say. Well, I am a dirty, smelly hippie, so I guess there's that. Did the Founding Fathers have some good ideas? Sure. And they had a lot more ideas that when we look back, we realize that they were terrible ideas. But you know, let's not look at the future, let's look at the past and romanticize it and act like if the way things were done then, without the bad things that were an integral part of the way people lived back then, were implemented today, that we'd have a perfect anarcho-capitalist libertarian paradise where nobody does bad things because they have so many freedoms and everyone has a good life because good paying jobs are plentiful if you know the right people and network really well. And then, of course, if you don't know the right people and don't network really well, you're a shitty, lazy freeloader who deserves to die on the street because, you know, tough love. Everything will just fall into place, almost like a magic trick that goes horribly wrong and someone has to go to the hospital. Yep, let's take that anarcho-capitalist, libertarian paradise mental imagery seriously because America. So yeah, there are plenty of things that we can't talk about, or the right-wing's version of the political correctness brigade will come by to attempt to extinguish those horrible concepts that this country may not actually be that great and never was. So I guess I went off track a little bit here. The main thing I'm trying to say is that if you want people to understand what you're saying, you have to actually make an attempt to talk about things in the ways that you believe they will understand best. And if you've tried this several times and you get the same shitty results, it's you that is the problem. You must find a different way to bring up the discussion. You must avoid using certain words and phrases, flat out. This goes for both sides. The truth is, when any side decides that something someone has said is too outrageous to consider, they're really not going to listen. Reducing the times that others feel that way is probably the best route to take if you want people to actually understand what you're saying. This is rarely being done on either side, really. If you're on the left, again, avoid using the following words because they trigger Republicans, right-wingers who pretend to be left-wingers, neoliberals, supposedly classical liberals, and alt-writers. These words are privilege, feminism, racism, sexism, transphobia, gender equality, toxic masculinity. It doesn't matter what the technical definition of feminism is or any of these other words or phrases are. People have their ideas of what it means and whether they're wrong or not. You have to discuss the issue knowing how they feel about the word. Consider their feelings and maybe, just maybe, they'll consider yours. Also, don't use statistics that have been debunked over and over again to make your points. Don't chastise people for not falling in line with your beliefs. Like, don't call someone a misogynist for disagreeing with one of your points. Don't call someone a racist if they bring up crime statistics. You may find that what the right-wingers are saying to be utterly putrid and horrendous, but from their perspective, many of the things that you say look just as putrid and horrendous. You have to put the work into getting people other than the choir to understand what you're saying, or you're just preaching to the choir and declaring victory. Do not use cisgender as a pejorative. Do not use white as a pejorative. Do not use straight as a pejorative. Do not use men as a pejorative. Seriously, knock it off, or no one's going to listen except for your safe space choir. Ooh.